come back through the market, and then we can uh, use that to inform our update of our transportation plan. So the separated bike lanes, if you don't know, uh, Downsmere Viaduct is, well, I guess the Burrard Bridge was a section that had a long history, but uh, we implemented the Burrard Bridge. Uh, we implemented the Downsmere Viaduct uh, following the games. Um, essentially, that did, that just meant moving a divider from one side of the street to the other. We had dead space on one side and moved the divider over and created a bike lane on the other side with no change to travel lanes. Um, the Dunsmere Street project, which did reduce um, some of the car capacity, and then the, then the thing that launched a lot of the, uh, the uh, spirited debate uh, was the Hornby bike lane. And, uh, and the Hornby bike lane connects both to the seawalls and to the Dunsmere. So the, the idea being that this route um, connects two of the neighborhoods that have our highest mode share for cycling. And while we're about 4% overall for our cycling mode share, um, Kitsilano is around 11 to 12%, and Granby Woodlands is around 11 to 12%. So we've connected the two neighborhoods that have the highest cycling mode share directly into the downtown and, and to uh, the, the seawall and the aquarium and Stanley Park and other facilities. Um, I'll just touch on a couple things related to Hornby. One of the things we looked at when Hornby, we did something called an intercept survey. And, um, and that's basically just surveying, intercepting people on the sidewalk and asking them, how did you get here? Why are you here? And one of the things we found was that more than 75% of the people on Hornby Street, on the sidewalk, before we put in the bike plan, um, got there by um, other than car. And so by walking, cycling, and transit. The 22% uh, the that did take a, a vehicle, um, we talked to them, well, first of all, um, they parked um, more than a block away from Harvey, and also 60% uh, of them were interested in trying to bike lane if we, if we build the bike lane. So we did get asked some questions of the drivers themselves. So, so one of the concerns we know from businesses, we did this for businesses, to inform businesses. We knew that they were concerned with what's this going to do to the customers. And so we talked to the people on the sidewalk who are the customers of the street, and 75% uh, of them didn't drive, and 60% of the ones that did drive were willing to try um, cycling at some point if we put in a separated facility. Um, I'll just maybe do a couple of other slides and then just open up the questions. Um, one thing we learned from the Burrard Ridge trial was that cycling volumes did go up. Um, we went up about 28%, and what we've done, yeah, obviously, it was a big. Um, this, this is month and uh, volumes. And we see a big, a big dip um, with winter and summer. And it's very much weather dependent. We see some spikes really take off if it's even a cloudy day as opposed to a pouring rain day. Um, there's a core of cyclists that ride no matter what, um, even in the snow. Um, there's a core of cyclists that ride even in heavy um, rain and weather. And there's a group of cyclists that are fair weather cyclists that come up when it's nice. So we see the volumes change dramatically due to weather. One thing that this did was we, we did an estimate of what the volumes would be on um, Burrard Bridge without the bike lanes. That's the green. And the blue is the actual readings um, well, uh, from the bike lanes. So we saw a 26% increase overall um, by putting in a separated bike lane. Um, for Dunsmere, as soon as we put it in, we have a 400% increase in riders um, when it went in. And Hornby, we're just starting now. We've had a cool of the, the cool of the spring, still waiting for us to start to get some summer like weather. Uh, but these are the Dun Dunsmere numbers, and these are the Hornby numbers starting to, uh, uh, starting to grow. I think we're out. How do you measure those? Um, measure them in a variety. Uh, that's, that's one of the criticisms I've heard, is that, you know, that I'm another reason for being the most hated man in the city, that I'm making up the numbers. So uh, we do a few things. One is we, we have hoses. We put hose cameras across with a little data box, and we come out and download the data from the box in the computer. And, uh, so hoses. We also cut magnetic loops into the, into the pavement. So if you see a diamond-shaped loop, there's a wire in there, and it picks up the metal of the bike. And so that's wired into our central computers. So we don't have to send people out to get the data. We get that data live um, in our central computer. And then because of the concerns we heard about the reliability of the data, data we have people out um, there, not every day, but regularly, um, just counting manually. And then we plot the manual counts, the magnetic loop counts, and post counts, and we've got a pretty good correlation of all three of those. Um, they're never exact, 
and you see people, um, how they ride in this account, or they come into the lane and go out, and so, um, but, but we see a really strong correlation in the data. So we have three different methods of collecting the data. And it's all available on the web, by the way, so, uh, so we post, uh, post these types of graphs, uh, weekly graphs, and then you can, you can link to a big spreadsheet that shows the daily uh, ridership numbers as well. So, um, maybe I'll stop here, but uh, um, I guess this was a sense of, of the before and after. It's a little bit hard to see. But again, um, th this is a bike lane, painted bike lane. You know, um, we're ahead of many cities just by painting in some space for bikes. That's a good thing. But you can see, um, you know, there's, there's only a certain segment of the population who's prepared and comfortable to ride a bike downtown in this facility. Um, you've often got cars turning, you've often got cars stopped in the lane. And, and this is why we don't actually have good before data on Hornby, because this is Hornby before. And when we had those counters here, we had a number of cars you know, clipping the, catching the counters, and so we, didn't, we, we, we don't have accurate before data, because there was no bar barrier there keeping the cars out. Now the after, um, uh, we feel we have a facility, but not perfect, always room for improvement, and, and it's an evolution. But we feel we've gone a long way towards creating a facility that will meet our target, meet the needs of the target market. So maybe oh, one last thing I just say though is um, we are updating our transportation plan right now. Um, we're we're having 11 town hall meetings. We're having 50 stakeholder workshops. And and if you can't make it to one of the meetings, you can go on our website and have the workshop experience on the website. And we've got a short video. Uh, that you can watch. We've got a 15-minute PowerPoint that's narrated, um, so that's the presentation you can see. Um, there's dialogue, ongoing dialogue, moderated dialogue, so it's moderated 24-7, and you can uh, get involved with, with your ideas and discussion with others. So I encourage you all to uh, get involved in the, uh, in the uh, updating of the transportation plan process. Um, some of the tough choices will come out of the first quarter of next year. This is kind of the meet and greet right now. We can let people know about our trends and our data. And then we're going to draft the plan through the fall. And we'll be out early in the new year um, with the draft plan and some choices for people to give us feedback on. But I encourage you all, please take a look at uh, it's called Top, Top Transportation 2040. Anyways, go to the city web the site, Vancouver, I'll see it. And you can find it. So with that, Take, no way. take me wherever you want to take me. Thanks. And I wanted to say just on the on the dialogue here, if you are interested in dialogue, I think that the transportation plan process is some of the most innovative online use of tools. They're experimenting with some things, so that's just on the side on the dialogue part. Let's the other thing I've said is that if you if you got a group, if you've got a dozen people and you want us to come up, we'll come up. We'll come up for one on ones. But if you can get a group of a dozen people that for some reason are interested in talking about transportation on that, we're happy to come up and. Uh, and have that conversation with you during, during one time period. Uh, but this this um, will go through to July, and then we'll report up to council what we heard in September, and then we we'll start up again first quarter of next year um, with uh, with a deeper um, conversation that relates to draft plan and choices. But right now, it's about values. What you know, what's important to you? The key questions we're asking right now: What's important to you? What we heard last time was we want a city that's less dominated by the car. It resulted in the transportation plan that I talked about. So we want to know what's important to Vancouver rights now, and uh, what are their values, and what are their visions, and ideas, and then we'll come back to the draft plan next year. I saw some hands up. So Marianne, so we've got, is it Marianne? Yes. yes. So we've got one, two, three. Let's take three questions, and then Jerry have a chance to respond, and then we'll take the next three questions. So Marianne, go ahead. Just with these 50 stakeholder Groups have those groups already uh, made an application to speak, or is that who are those fifty groups? Yeah, th those are groups that we go out and meet with them. It includes um, all the residents' associations in the city. It includes um, the different business improvement associations in the city, the Board of Trade, the Airport, um, Metroport Metro. So they're they're this um, taxi roundtable, taxi group. So they're different organizations and groups within the city. Um, We've, we've reached out to them, but that's why I make the offer if you've got a dozen people who want to talk transportation, we'll come up and talk with you because it's not, it's not a finite number. Those are the ones that we know 